Welcome to BOC. This film is designed to help you weld safely, get the best possible results, as well as save you time and money. So whether you're just starting out on your career, already use welding in your workplace but want to achieve far more, or just want to get started, this video is for you. We're focusing on mag welding some mild steel, a typical workshop task, offering useful hints and tips, and all with one goal in mind getting the job done right and first time. This film focuses on achieving the right settings on your welding machine to achieve the best possible results. There are two important considerations when using a mag welding machine. When setting up your welding machine for your weld, you will need to ensure that it is set to the correct wire feed speed, which is measured in meters per minute. Wire speed is critical if you want to achieve a satisfactory weld deposit. The wire needs to have the right characteristics for the metal you are working with, especially in terms of its thickness. The second consideration is the amount of electrical current to use. Too little and the wire will not be sufficiently fused to achieve a good weld. Too much and it will overheat the welding wire. So wire feed speed and achieving the right voltage is crucial. Most welding machines offer users a choice when it comes to controlling the wire feed speed and volts. The option that we'll be using is a machine with two separate controls which are manually adjusted by the welder. One for the wire and the other to set the voltage. Let's go through how to get our welding machine ready. Firstly, it is important that the wire feed rollers are suitable for the thickness of wire you are using. In this case, one millimeter. Then hand tighten the wire retaining nut to ensure the wire is securely held in place. Keeping hold of the wire Feed it through the wire feeding mechanism. The wire will come through and is connected to the torch's wire feed liner. We'll then engage the wire feed rollers which are set at a satisfactory tension. To begin the wire feed use the wire feed internal switch or use the trigger on the torch. A few extra checks are now required. Close the cover to avoid contamination of the wire and ensure that nothing is stored inside the cover. Ensure that the work return lead is attached to the item being welded or to the workbench. Make sure that the torch cable is as straight as possible to ensure smooth feeding of the welding wire. We're aiming to have a 10mm wire stick out as we need to see the weld being deposited when we're working and want our shielding gas to be effective. A good idea, especially with a manual machine such as this, is to run a trial first on a similar piece of metal to the one you wish to weld so you can get your settings just right. We have selected this mild steel to work with. There are some key things to look out for during these test welds. If the weld deposit is overheated your wire speed is likely to be too low. Alternatively if the wire speed is too high there's likely to be a stringy appearance and excess spatter. With any machine with manual settings like this there is a degree of trial and error and you'll need to use your judgment when it comes to setting the wire speed and voltage. However, this is an ideal weld and we'll save the settings and now get ready to produce our fillet weld. Next up, having got the welding machine set up correctly, we're now ready to perform our weld. Don't forget, set your wire feed speed and voltage correctly. Ensure the wire feed rollers are suitable for the wire. Check that the wire retaining nut is secure and cover closed. Attach the work return lead and straighten the torch cable. Set your wire stick out to 10 millimeters. Run a test weld to check your settings. 